when I was a little girl, it was really strange because the other little girls used to always be like, oh, you know, she thinks she cute. She got long hair. And it wasn't even about that with me. I really didn't notice what the big deal was, but it, it kind of made a little bit of a negative impact. But I got over it <laughs> because I realized that had to be me. Everyone say my hair is beautiful. Thank you. ጸጉር ላይ ኢትዮጵያኖች በጣም አስፈላጊ ነው ደስታችን ሀዘናችንን የምንገልጸው በጸጉራችን ነው ከቤተሰባችን ውስጥ አንድ ሰው በሞት ሲለይ ጸጉራችንን እንላጫዋለን ደስተኞች سنሆን ጸጉራችንን ረጅም አድርገን እንጠብቀዋለን I stated many times in the years that I've dressed hair I've been dressing hair for 33 years now that at any given time on a social level you look at a particular hairstyle you can just about associate where that person go who they hang out with what their friends what their perspective on the outlook on life is so it's a whole gamut of social recognition one of the things that i've learned from studying my great great grandmother madam cj walker is that she is a woman who remade herself coupled with what she did in terms of women looking at themselves taking care of themselves considering their own beauty was to create economic independence for women she then was the was one of the pioneers of a business that has become a multi-billion dollar business in america i get mixed emotions about my hair they come from my mother and friends my mother says uh cut that blank 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 shit off <laughs> uh and she says uh, well people might think you're gay but the women like it they go hmm might want to check that out uh having worked in the corporate world i had to conform uh to the norm and uh, be kind of conventional in my hairstyle now i'm a stylist and i get to pretty much wear my hair the way i want to hey carl look at carl i was just wondering right carl they look here i know you brush your hair every night and every morning right now the girls in school be saying what to you in the morning <laughs> you look cute, huh? Oh, I know you're cute. I know you're cute, huh, Joy? And Joy, I'll tell you something, too. You've been watching little boys because you got that pretty hair like that, yeah. huh? You could know because, well, no. Joy, you got the pretty stuff on it. Oh, oh, oh that's family business, huh? <laughs> Usually the way I wear my hair is the result of how other people feel about me. I, when I was young, I grew up in Hawaii. So I was like the only black person in school, basically. My mother made me wear afro, so I felt like I was representing the whole black race. And I was like, this is too much for one kid. And I got older, she made me wear a jerry curl and I thought that was like too feminine, so I really didn't like that. So when I got on my own, I got a high top trying to fit in with everybody else. And uh, that was cool at the time, so then I got real religious. So I got a real close haircut, so it was like non-threatening. I get all types of reactions for having this gray patch in my hair. I was walking into a pizza parlor one day, a guy's walking out, he says to me, you can tell futures, can't you? Get away from me, get back, don't even touch me. <laughs> when I was 16 years old, I lost my sight, but my concepts and perceptions of hair was very, it's still very vivid in my mind. When we were younger, they used a lot of harsh chemicals like lye and what have you, and like tuxedo to slick it down and make it really shiny and greasy. I really had a lot of concept a lot of problems with that. Plus, I had problems with uh, women with beautiful hair, and all of a sudden, they put hot combs on it to flatten it out and make it look straight when it was beautiful and gorgeous to me at, the, at, the, at that time. And I guess that uh, influenced the way that I think about hair today. Hair, hair, it's like, that play hair around here, everybody's talking about hair. It's funny, because when the play first came out, and when my parents explained it to me, I didn't really understand it. I didn't understand how hair could have such an impact on cultures, on trends, on politics, on everything. And it makes so much sense now because our hair is a dictation of the way we live. You missed it. Yeah, I thought you were gonna be there. Hold on a second. May I help you? Hello, I have an appointment today. Name? Carolyn. 
time, 11 o'clock. I'm sorry, I don't have a Carolyn at 11 o'clock. No Carolyn for 11, it has no. to be on there. I just called two days ago. I know it's here, I have to get my hair done. Where's There's Ramon? no Carolyn for 11 o'clock. Where is here. Ramon? He's here. Hunter, try Hunter, mm -hmm. Carolyn Hunter. Well, there's Hunter here, but you didn't say Hunter. If you have a seat, I'll let Ramon know you're here. Thank you. Ramon, there's a Ms. Hunter here to see you. Girl, people in their hair just don't make no kind of sense. Anyway, what was I saying? You, know, you see her giving the receptions a hard time. You know, I'd have read her damn. Mm -hmm. But you know, couldn't be me, those Ramon clients. You know, they all like him. Did you get into her shoes? Chair, where the, where she think she going? No, she, she ain't no punk rock club. That's a beauty color. Yolanda, Denise Johnson is here for you. Oh, your hair looks good. Thank you. Isn't it wonderful? Yeah. Ramon is an artist, you know. When I get home, this evening, my boo is not going to even know who I am. <laughs> See you next week, girl. See you next week. Must got a hot date tonight, baby. Hot date, don't I wish? Miss I got a hot interview, and you know what? Gotta look at the part. This thing, I'm over all this hair, girl. You know one thing? You need a perm, cause I'm over doing them pressing curls. When you ain't nobody getting no pressing curls no more. You said it's every time I come in here, and how many times do I say no? This thing. Oh, Miss Thay, I base you real good. You ain't gonna feel it. Aren't you <laughs> Look, tired of getting that? I'm not tired of it. I happen to like it. I'm gonna charge you extra today. Cause I'm tired of doing it. Child, I'm over it. I'm really over it. I'm gonna cut all this stuff off, spike you, perm you, and give you a whole new attitude. I can't take it. Uh-uh, you are not gonna light a fire to my head. Now that stuff burns. The same old, same old with you every time you come. You act like my hair looks so bad. Press and care, press and care, <laughs> press and care. Yeah, well, you just give me the works. Oh, it's so wavy. She got some good hair. Uh, good hair, bad hair. Um, well, good hair is basically the hair that you come out of your mother's womb with. And I think bad hair would have to be anything that you try to change from out of that which has come out of your womb, uh, your mother's womb. I despise the stereotype of uh, good hair, bad hair. Uh, what we have is hair texture. There's no such thing as good hair or bad hair. We have many, all of us have many, many different hair textures. Well, I can say this about my hair history, that overall I've been pretty <laughs> bad to my hair. I've gone through several changes. My earliest memory is when I was little. I was about five and my parents were battling over my good hair or having bad hair. It was good because it was thick but in long, but yet it was bad because it was coarse and nappy and kinky and niggerish. Yes. Can you shampoo Miss Carolyn's hair for me, please? Yes, yeah, send her over. Thank you. My earliest memories of my hair was my mother massaging my scalp because she felt that these, these edges were too thin. And she would massage and oil and oil and massage and I used to hate it. And then she'd sit me in the bathtub and bathe me and wash my hair at the same time. I 
to learn how to fix my hair myself. I use Vaseline on my hair, try to have to plait it. And you know, sometimes they force me to go swimming. I said, what am I doing with my hair? They didn't understand about my hair. It didn't matter with them. I had to go swimming. So I had to suffer through that. I used a shower cap, had to plait my hair and everything. It really hurt me fixing my own hair. I just hope that she keeps it up. Um, when she when she gets old, you know old enough to wash it herself, I hope she keeps it washed and looking nice and neat. Yeah. My earliest hair memory is at age three. My mother and my Aunt Ruth held me down in the bathtub to wash my hair. They said it was because I was such a tender-headed child and I would act such a fool when they would wash it. As a result of being blind, there are three things that I concentrate on. The three things are texture, uh, smell, as well as personality. Not often do I have a chance to reach out and feel an individual's hair, but it has happened on occasions, and uh, if you know what I mean. Um, I, I have uh, felt hair that felt like a rag doll as a result of uh, the greasy curl or the jerry curl or uh, whatever that curl is called. Well, I get a lot of teasing from my brother regarding the jerry curl, regarding the drip. And he tells me to keep my head off his car, the back of his car seat and stuff like that, but it doesn't bother me at all. I still like wearing my jerry curl. Initially, I didn't think I'd get a strange reaction. I thought it would just be a hairstyle that I'd be attractive and people would just like it. But when I went to high school with my head shaved, I got very strange reactions. Most um, black people didn't like it very much. They thought it was masculine and they thought I was strange for getting it. It wasn't surprising me that I was going bald. It runs in my family, as you can see. My father went bald and so I knew it was gonna happen to me. The thing that I grew up with in Washington, D.C., since my family's from a different country, uh, being dark and being considered a black American, I was discriminated on both ends by uh, whites and blacks because my hair is straight and it's long. And coming up, people give you certain stereotypes because of the kind of style or length or straightness in your hair. I prefer a natural hairstyle, uh, but, you know, I'm, I'm not one of those people who's really uh, militant about, well, if you're not, if, if you don't have natural hair, you're not down with the struggle or whatever. Although, to be perfectly honest, I do have a problem with guys and perms. See this thick hair right here, it's really thick. But I've had my hair plaited, braided, and uh, all kind of, you name it, I've done it all. To express myself, you know, I like, I like hair, it's, this is like art to me. Surprisingly, when I got to cosmetology school, they taught nothing about African-American hair textures. Basically, what they taught was that something was wrong with this hair. It was over curly. Uh, it needed to be corrected, or in order for it to be beautified, it had to be straightened.
You can come on out. When I came to America, I have to relax my hair every week because I wanted to be accepted by everybody to have that straight hair. And I got really tired of it because I know it really wasn't me, it wasn't traditional. The military has always had a, a hair code for women. In the Navy, it was your hair had to be above the back of the collar of your shirt. I chose to cut mine off. I was in the military when Operation Desert Storm kicked into flight. I was a reservist called active duty. My hair really didn't um, seem to be a problem to me at the time because I worked in the hair industry. And it was kind of, it was kicking, you know. I'm still in the military and I have no problems with the restrictions. I, you know, I'm from Jamaica and I went to a regimented kind of high school, regimented college, so the military is just perfect. Basically, I kept my hair cut on the sides. That's what the rules said. I chose my hairstyle from this book of African styles. Um, I've always been fascinated with locks, and for me, uh, my hair is a personal statement as well as a political statement. I feel it's my way of claiming and expressing my cultural and political self-determination. My mother didn't really want me to do anything with my hair. She thought I looked better with my hair natural. She used to um, braid it or plait it, put it in plaits. And I wanted to do something with my hair because all the other kids in class had, um, you know, they had their hair relaxed and stuff. And I was getting older and I wanted to get something done with my hair. And we went the summer and had my hair relaxed. And I got burnt so badly in the back of my head. I was, uh, it was, it hurt for about two days. The back of my head was just burned. But I didn't want to say anything. I told my mom, you know, I pretended everything was fine. And um, my hair fell out eventually. What relaxing or perming does to the hair is it breaks down the structure of the hair. The relaxer goes in, it opens up these scales, it goes into the flesh and breaks down what is called uh, a bond to simplify it. Um, the bond is what creates the shape of the hair. And African hair, as we know, has a shape of an S or a curl pattern. long wigs, short wigs. I'm an entertainer, so I kind of change my hairstyle according to my mood. Um, I even started dreadlocks at one time, and I liked them, but I didn't want to make a commitment to one hairstyle because I, I changed my mind too much. Um, at any rate, my hairstyles don't determine my blackness. I am a black woman, I'm a black person, and my heart and my mind and my soul, and my hairstyle doesn't determine my blackness. Well, let me tell you what's happened since I put this weave in my head. I have men, men are weird. Men see my hair and they go, hey, I love your hair. Can I take you out? I'm like, wow, you guys are really stupid. To think that hair would affect someone's opinion about you, but it does. La primera vez que fui por un interview para un trabajo, fui con un hombre negro y él me estaba diciendo del trabajo y me cayó muy bien y todo eso. Y a, al último del interview me dijo, ay, tu pelo es tan largo y tan bonito, le encantó mi pelo. Bueno, 
la próxima semana yo fui con mis amigas y me corté todo el pelo bien bien cortico más cortico que está ahora bueno regresé para el segundo interview y fue con él y el presidente de la compañía y al último del interview me estaba diciendo pero por qué te cortaste el pelo ¿Cómo me pudiste hacer esto a mí? Y yo le dije, bueno, es mi pelo, no es pelo tuyo. <laughs> yo no entendí eso. <laughs> the reactions to my cutting off my hair have been generally positive. My two biggest critics are my mother and my grandmother. My mother is actually wishy-washy because I think on one hand she likes the idea that her daughter has courage enough to do what's not really accepted by black women in this society, cut off your hair. But on one hand, she wants her daughter to have hair. My grandmother is consistent. She does not like it. When I come in her house and one of her friends is there, she doesn't say, this is my daughter, my granddaughter, Erin. She says, this is my granddaughter, Erin. She can grow hair. And she starts whipping out pictures of me when my hair was shoulder length. Um, basically, the reason I shaved my head bald was because nature pretty much dictated to me that I needed to. Um, it was, it was kind of like the fashion of the summer. Everybody was doing it, made popular pretty much by Michael Jordan. And the reaction to it, for the most part, uh, the females seem to think it's kind of sexy. And a lot of times they want to touch it or, or kind of rub on it. And, you know, so it, it's kind of working with me. I've only had positive responses to it. Um, I, I, I have noticed that um, people in Ghana normally don't have any, um, any politics attached to hair, but it's, it becomes more pronounced when one um, comes to America. And in a sense, we're all affected by the um, perva pervading racial um, prejudices that are here. And, um, and also the pervading politics that are attached to, that is attached to her. is because it gives me pride and self-confidence. I still get um, negative reactions, but because it's difficult, that's why I want to wear it. Because people don't like it, it's more of a challenge for me to have this hairstyle. And um, I feel it's an obligation as a black woman to, for someone to wear their hair this way, for someone to carry on this tradition. And that's why I wear it. Younger kids, unfortunately, uh, tend to associate it with Kojak. The thing that's changed the most is the way that men approach me. When my hair was permed and it was shoulder length, the brothers would be like, yo, shorty, what's up? You look good, you know, what's happening? What's up, shorty? And ever since I cut my hair, it's now like, sister, you look good. Walk on, Lady Africa, my Nubian princess. And it's all a line, but you know, still, it's just different. Carolyn, your hair is everything. Oh, Ramon, please tell me we're almost through. Girl, what you think? You came here for all this long hair stressing me out. Ramon, I hope you get I'm this interview. I'm nervous. I have an interview tomorrow. I hope you get it, honey. <laughs> I'm going to do my very best. I'm just going to think of you encouraging me, and I'm just going to make it. You will want to, honey, because you know I want a fat old tip, a nice old big black red bend, honey. Oh, come on now. You know I look out for you, as always. Girl, so how you like this? Ooh. Hey, if nothing else, my interviewer is going to love my hairstyle. Honey, you know Ramon don't play. <laughs> Thanks, Ramon. When my daughter was born, she sort of, we, we didn't choose for her to have dreads. She had dreads because her father had dreads and I had dreads. And so it was just a given that she would have them also. But over the years, it became a problem in a way because they're very hard to care for. She's very tender-headed and so washing her hair and doing anything with her hair was just a big painful fiasco 
And um, she yeah, would come home with glue in her glue hair and paint and, glue and glitter and, and dirt. And dirt and blah, blah, blah. That's right. And, and so no one really was taking care of it except for me. And so I started thinking about whether or not we should cut, cut them. It. And so I asked her one day if we should cut them. And um, she said no, that she didn't want to. And I asked her why. And she said that she thought her father was going to be mad at her. And, um, and I said, well, what if, what if your dad isn't mad at you? Then would you want them to be cut? And she said, no. well, no. Why? <laughs> Why? Because I thought they were going to bleed. She, didn't, she was afraid that her hair was going to bleed. The guy said, Leroy, your hair getting gray. I said, sure, it's getting gray. It stayed black long enough. <laughs> For the last two and a half years, I've been wearing braids. Because t finally, this is something I feel comfortable with, that I can wear my hair as natural, it can be thick, and I've, I've realized that those images of my hair is not bad anymore. And finally, I believe that I'm at peace with my hair. As far as the response I get from the haircut has been, you know, uh, they call me BBB, stands for the Black Bob Big Boys, or oh, these a hamburger or something, maybe I'd be all right. Um, and um, I'm from just so many different things. You know, uh, a matter of fact, I was in a club playing and as uh, far as a couple of ladies call it the tickler. But that's a rated X type of thing, I ain't gonna get like that. But um, so um, the hairstyle's been very fun. Um, it's, it's, it's very fun to keep, it's very manageable. And I'm um, like I always tell friends, everybody's talking about this and that, but the black hair is where it's at. Okay, oh baby, it's perfect, I love it. Yes, yes, yes. find beauty in all the different looks and all the different images that African-American women represent and that African women throughout the diaspora represent. We must learn to accept each other, not judge each other because someone wears her hair a certain way, but to accept each other for all of the beauty that we bring uh, to, this, to this universe. During the 60s, we used to wear the big bush. I really liked that because it gave the identity of Africa. It was and I felt that when people straight their, straightened their hair, it was kind of emulating the, the Anglo-Saxon or the white person, and I felt a lot of problems with that. But I guess now that I've gotten older, oh, and free choice is what, what that is, uh, if you wear your hair in a natural way, it really doesn't matter how you wear it, it's your brains inside. The nice thing about black hair is that you can dye it, you can fry it, you can flip it, you can dip it, but the root stays the same. It never dies. I love my hair. I love my hair. Yo